for a long time. High energy physics as a branch of science, that was seen as the odd man in the room. Difficult to understand and even harder to quantify. But with this complexity came beauty. When we began to understand some of the smallest building blocks in the universe, we were able to start answering some of the oldest questions known to mankind. Questions like how it all began and even why we exist. My broad area of work is uh, experimental high energy nuclear physics. So my work uh, focuses on a microsecond old universe when it just started. What we did is uh, we smashed heavy nuclei like gold or lead uh, moving with uh, speed of close to speed of light and uh, created the conditions which existed in this early universe. Something like 10 to the power 12 Kelvin which is a million times hotter than the core of sun. Uh, in doing so, uh, the matter melted into its fundamental building blocks, which are called quarks or gluons. And uh, you see, we find uh, electrons because the flow of electrons is current, but we do not see free quarks and gluons, uh, the fundamental unit which each one of us are made up of. But we managed to make it free and mimicked the early universe. That allowed us to study its property. Now, it was a very interesting finding. This matter, each one of us is made up of, at that temperature, had the lowest kinematic viscosity compared to any known fluid in this universe. Hence, it was called a perfect fluid. Now we are trying to figure out uh, its conductivity, its uh, diffusion coefficient, and many other uh, features. The model which describes the universe uh, nicely so far, because it is uh, verified by experiments, is called as the Big Bang model. And uh, what we are recreating in the laboratory is uh, mimicking that, so it's uh, often referred to as little bangs. Now, uh, in the Big Bang uh, picture, matter and antimatter should have been created in equal proportions. So, universe could have become antimatter completely, but it's actually matter dominated, or the matter and antimatter could have annihilated and become energy and nothing would have existed. So what happened that we are in a matter dominated universe? That is one of the greatest unsolved physics problems or science problem. Now in the course of doing this experiments with all these high tech detectors and then we found the heaviest antimatter nuclei in the laboratory and it's called anti-alpha. Uh, this anti-alpha is the anti-matter partner of alpha particle. It is created through a nuclear process. Now, people are trying to search this antimatter which was there in the early universe by sending detectors in space. Now, if they discover such antimatter like anti-alpha, they need to discover beyond what we have found in the laboratory to claim that those are the antimatter which was present from early universe. So we sort of give a baseline for those experiments which are trying to figure out uh, where, where did the antimatter go.
If you pick up a, a textbook in physics a, at school level, you will find it tells that water has three forms or phages, but it's same uh, H2O. So what happened? These atoms rearrange themselves. Underlying uh, force is what is called as electromagnetic force. It is one of the four fundamental forces that exist in the universe. What we are asking is the nuclear matter which makes up everything that you see whose underlying force is the strong force, the strong nuclear force, does it also have such phages? And what we found is uh, there are at least two distinct phages. One is this free state of quark and gluons like in early universe often referred to as quark gluon plasma and the other where these quark and gluons are prisoned inside particles like protons, neutrons which make the nucleus of an atom and that is a gas of hadrons. This phage structure of uh, nuclear matter is very rich. We have not yet completely uh, found the picture. Once we do that, then this phase diagram will also become part of the textbooks, finding its place besides the water phase diagram, which is in school textbooks. High energy experiments have uh, uh, three broad uh, uh, components, uh, accelerators, detectors and uh, uh, computing. The detectors are the heart of the experiment because uh, when these two nuclei come and collide, a lot of particles are produced. These particles are of variety of kinds. They come out with a variety of momentums and at different angles. As a result, you need a different sets of detectors which will surround the experimental region and try to capture this. And in both the STAR experiment and ALICE experiment, the Indian group has put up a detector. I have contributed towards the concept of making this detector, then uh, testing its prototype, then putting it at the experimental site, taking data and analyzing the data. Uh, these detectors not only are important for these experiments, they can be used for different societal applications. For example, people are working on to use this detector for medical imaging. Detectors which detect the smallest of the particles in uh, fastest of the time can be used to image uh, the organs uh, or disease, uh, diseased organs in human body. Uh, not only uh, uh, in, it will replace the two-dimensional x-rays with a three-dimensional uh, colored image and will lead to tremendous development uh, in medical science. The young minds, the PhD students and postdocs play a very vital role in the experimental high energy physics. They are the people who are doing the real work. The future is very bright in terms of there are many unsolved physics questions still remaining. Not only that, there are future facilities which are coming up to address those science goals. For example, the Large Hadron Collider is likely to be replaced by a much larger accelerator called as uh, FCC, the Future Circular Collider. There are many interesting experiments coming up in the area of neutrino physics. So there is a great future for people who want to embark on this area of experimental high energy physics. There is also one other reason why uh, young people are important in this field of experimental uh, high energy physics or in field of science. To make my point, I would like to quote our own Nobel laureate, uh, Professor C. V. Raman. He actually said, 
Youth is the most glorious time of all. I have said elsewhere that most of the great discoveries in science have been made by young people. It is not the experience or wisdom that old age brings, but the freshness of outlook, the indomitable desire to achieve, which is the characteristics of youth that makes discoveries possible. It is this that makes life worthwhile. If only you realize this and realize that here I am, I am still young, let me see what I can do that all discoveries become possible. So it's very inspiring what he felt about uh, youth contributing to science and I have similar views about it. For me, uh, the Infosys uh, Prize is a real pleasant surprise. Uh, I had not expected it. It's a recognition of uh, peers of your work and that's what is very valuable uh, in science, that your peers appreciate work which is not one year, two years, but over 20, 22 years. The efforts that you have put in uh, there has been times where you failed, you need uh, patience uh, and uh, perseverance uh, uh, to continue with that. It's a recognition of the journey which one does to reach one's goal. Uh, so in that, I, I take it in that way, but also uh, it inspires me to continue in this path and still there are a lot of unsolved problems and uh, one wants to go ahead with it. This also inspires me that uh, to convey it to my students uh, that, uh, and try to guide them in their chosen career paths. <laughs>